I am often asked to write letters of recommendation for people. I know not to take it too personally. It's because I'm a priest. I imagine that it does help if you have a priest write you a letter of recommendation, and I'm happy to do it. But often when someone asks me for a letter of recommendation, I'll say, can you send me a copy of your resume? A lot of times I know someone from church, but I don't know everything about the rest of their life. So I like to see their resume so I can put all the pieces together. If I asked you that question, could you send me a copy of your latest resume? How hard would that be for you to do? When's the last time you updated it? For me, it was 2009 when I went to the seminary. Last time I updated my resume. It would be all out of date now. A good resume is important, especially when you're young. It opens doors for you. A lot of times, whatever you're applying for, you need to be able to supply your resume. And you want to be able to show a lot of things about yourself. You want to be able to show that you're smart. Here's my transcript. It'd be helpful if you were athletic. Here's the sports that I've competed in. It's good to show that you're talented. Make a list of your awards and your achievements. You should probably learn how to play a couple of musical instruments. Maybe learn a couple of foreign languages. It'd be good if you can be an Eagle Scout. National Honor Society would be a help. And then we'll fingerprint you to make sure that you haven't committed any felonies. Now, the young man we're hearing about today in the gospel would have done great on all of those tests. He is the guy you want to hire. He's like a West Point cadet, or like someone who went to the Naval Academy or the Air Force Academy. You know, this is somebody who you'd want your daughter to date. If your neighbor put their house up for sale, you'd want somebody like this guy to buy the house so that you had somebody really good living next door. So this very put together young man says to Jesus, how do I reach the next level? How do I reach my potential? And so Jesus kind of puts on the hat of a guidance counselor and says, well, here's, here's how you do it. Here's how you start to build a life like that. And when the young man hears all these things, he says with honesty, I've really done that. I've really, I mean, I've tried really hard. I, I've, I've really put my shoulder into this. That describes me pretty well. And the detail that Jesus saw that he was telling the truth and loved him is really a, a beautiful way for us to see into this. Jesus says, oh my goodness. You mean you really, really want to pursue your potential? You're serious about this. And I imagine him saying something like to himself, I don't, I don't get this very often. This is, this is nice. You really want to reach your potential. And so he says to him, in a nutshell, you've got a great resume. You can stop working on that now. It's time to start working on your obituary. Doesn't that say it? Don't worry about your resume anymore. You've done that. There's no more for you to work on there. Start working on a great obituary. There's another question. If I asked you to send me the latest draft of your obituary, is that ready? What needs to be added before you would want to show that to anybody? What focus needs to shift? What's something from the past that maybe no longer really describes you and you'd like to go back and retrieve that and put that in? In the Book of Wisdom, we hear that most of us start off life pursuing the things that are in a resume. And, and the words that the author of Wisdom uses are ancient, but they kind of apply today, too. We seek scepter and throne. We seek riches and gems, gold and silver. And we seek beauty and vitality. And what we're hearing is we need to let that go and replace it with the virtues of an obituary. Because our resume showcases our accomplishments and our ego, but our obituary showcases our soul. 
A few weeks ago, we had a funeral here for Mike Brassel. Many of you may have known him. He was in leadership at the National Bank here, but he also went on to be the president of a smaller bank in the North Country. And although he raised his family in Glens Falls, his roots were in North Creek. And when I was talking to his daughter and his wife about his life so we could prepare for his funeral, his wife told me something very funny that, that she told with both a little bit of annoyance but also with pride. She said, oh, my Mike. She said, he stayed in such good touch with everybody up in North Creek, and he knew everybody when he walked into town. But she said, so often, like if somebody was having a hard time, Mike would be the one they'd call. A contractor needed a new piece of equipment and didn't have the money. And so Mike would loan him the money. She's like, the people would get into trouble with their mortgages, and Mike would help them with their mortgages. She's like, I just want to point out, we had a mortgage too, and three kids in college, but that didn't matter to Mike. Those were his values. And then she said, you know, I know where he got those values. She said it was my father-in-law. He was up in North Creek, and he wasn't a really rich man, but he was doing better than most. And so whenever there'd be a foreclosure auction, my father-in-law would go to the auction and he would buy the farm or the business that was being auctioned and then he would sell it back to the person at a price they could afford so that they didn't lose the farm, they didn't lose the house, they didn't lose the business. That kind of a story doesn't really fit in a resume. Where would you put it? Accomplishments? There's nowhere to put that story in a resume. But boy, does that make an amazing part of an obituary. I have a feeling that if you're a bank president like Mike, you wouldn't want that in your resume. They wouldn't give you the job. Helps the customers pay their mortgages? No, that's not what makes a great bank president necessarily, but it is what makes a great human being. I'm not sure at his funeral if I even mentioned that he was a bank president. I don't think it came up that much. But we definitely wanted to talk about those values that he learned from his family. There's a lot of lists of deathbed regrets out there. Sometimes people who work in hospice or palliative care will, will kind of catalog the things they've heard over the years of what people regret at the end of their life. And something that comes up again and again and again is, I regret that I worked so hard on pursuing things that in the end really don't matter. I wish I'd spent more time pursuing things that really matter to me. But I, I was working all the time. I was trying to climb the corporate ladder. And in the end, none of that made me happy. So this week, we are being asked, what is your obituary like right now? How's the draft going? Is there something that you'd say, I'd really like to add that? Or I'd really like to take this out. I don't want that in the final copy. Is there something that used to describe you that needs to go in? What is it that you'd like to see in your obituary? It's kind of like the ultimate version of a bucket list. What belongs in that, that document about who I was and what mattered to me? Now, as an aside, this is kind of a moment for us to recognize why the small groups are going to have such a beautiful week with this because the part of the Mass we're looking at this week is the Liturgy of the Word, the part we're in right now with the readings and the homily and the prayers. And you may have an experience in your life where you went to Mass not expecting anything to happen and the, the readings were like completely about your life. I know a lot of you have had that experience where it feels like, is, does God have surveillance cameras in my house or something? How did you know that this was what I needed to hear this week? But that's such a common experience for a lot of us. And that's what the small groups are going to talk about. Like, when has something that happened in, in the gospel or the homily or just the combination of the two really changed the path I was walking? This young man was a good guy, and he had a great resume. It's touching that 
Mark tells us that he walked away sad from Jesus because he really wanted to follow him, but he had invested so much in that resume. He wasn't quite ready to focus instead on his obituary. Do you think that makes him a bad person? I don't. I just think he wasn't ready. How about you and me? Are we?